Hello everyone. Um, I come on here uh, just to let everyone know that today is a good day. Um, it's a good day because you were able to get up, you were able to breathe, you were able to see, to move, uh, probably to hug and kiss your family members, um, pet, pet your pets um, on the way out the door, and it's a blessed day because you got to go to work. But there are many people around the world that are not given this opportunity, and for that I'm humble for what I have, and I'm thankful for what I have. But I want to let you know, for those that are listening to this message, that God is real and that God is amazing. Most of you know that I haven't felt very well and um, I'm going through an illness and it's affecting many people in my life as well as my own. Sorry about that. And um, it's also limited my ability to do certain things but my faith, my faith in God and knowing that he is wonderful and loving and merciful and, and not all those things, but he is powerful and he is a mighty healer. I know, I don't just believe, but I know for a fact that God is healing me. And... The reason why I know that is because there are several miracles that have happened in my life before and God was a part of it. And right before those miracles happen, God shows me things, God does things to me and to the people around me. He blesses, He just outpouring of blessings. I know God is real because things that I've been praying for have been coming to pass. Things that my husband's prayed for have come to pass. And I know how great our God is because when you share your burden with somebody else and that person or those individuals receive it in their heart and they cry for you they feel your pain they um, pray for you God listens to their prayers as well and when you have more people praying for you that are on your team that are with you fighting and sharing your burden miracles happen blessings are formed and received when that happens I have had an outpouring of prayers I've had an outpouring of love from phone calls to people coming by the house to people sending gifts to people sending money and it's amazing. I didn't ask for it. I didn't want people to feel sorry for me. But I did want to share my burden. Because I'm a Christian and I like to be a part of somebody else's burden. I like to share their burdens. I like to be in agreement and, and, and pray for them. And I surround myself with such amazing amazing individuals that share my burden that stand in agreement with me and pray for me and pray for my family and so many blessings have, have, have just been happening but I'm here to tell you for this video that it doesn't matter where you're at in your life you could be knocked down by sickness you could be knocked down by a divorce or a bad relationship you could be knocked down by 
a loss of a job or an addiction issue. But as long as you have some faith still in you, in your heart, it can happen. The blessings and breakthrough can happen for you. But you cannot do it alone. There's so many things that people think, oh, I'm not going to tell nobody. I'm going to keep it hidden. I'm, it's going to be a secret. I don't want the world to know. I don't want my work to know. I don't want my ex to know. I don't want my husband to know. I don't want my family to know. But let me tell you something. There's no shame in God. There's no shame in, in sharing your burden. Because what that does when you share your burden, you share the fact that you're sick, you share the fact that you're going through a divorce, you share the fact that you're um, addicted to drugs or alcohol, you share the fact that you need a job, doors will open for you. Blessings will be poured upon you. Because when you try to do it alone, the enemy knows that. The enemy wants to take advantage of your devastation and your grief. And, and he does it in such a, a malicious way that it will just spiral out of control one thing over another over another. Since I have shared my burden and so many of you have stand in agreement with me and, and, and shared my burden and took it on as if it was yours has made me stronger. My spiritual life right now, my faith is off the charts. I have always been the one to see the glass half full instead of half empty. I've always been the one to try to find a positive even in something negative. So with this illness that the doctors say I have, I've already beat it in my mind and in my heart. The only thing that's missing is the scientific part of it. But I know my God has already healed me because the signs he's given me, my eyes are open to see them. The people that I surround myself are already receiving blessings because they have been given to me. They've been praying for me. They've been sharing my burden. See, God doesn't want to just bless you. He wants to bless those around you. If you are on the receiving end of this message and you feel like you just have no more hope, you feel like you have no more strength. You feel like you just can't go on another day. Let me stand in agreement with you right now and tell you. I share your burden. I share anything that's on your heart. I break every curse and every generational stronghold that is on your body any addiction any depression any anxiety i break it right now in the name of jesus because i know that you have faith in your heart it may not be big right now you may feel like the world is crumbling around you i know because i just went through all my stages of grief because of them telling me the cancer's back. But I shared my burden with others. And since that, it has taken so much weight off of me. And I've been able to give it to God. I've been able to free my mind and my heart from everything else and just focus on God and, and know that, that this is his plan. He's going to get me through it. He's making me stronger. See, sometimes it's not the enemy 
that causes things to happen in your life. Sometimes God will allow things to happen in your life for you to recognize his truth, to recognize how real he is, and for you to get in tune with yourself and your body, mind, and spirit because God is going to take you to another place. See, I know that cancer is not going to beat me. I know that I'm going to beat cancer. I know I have already beat it. Because God has a bigger plan and purpose for me. He, My destiny, he is, he's taking me. This is just another door i got to go through to get to my destiny. Let me tell you a quick story. For those that feel like they can't go on and they they are stressed and, 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 and they just want to give up. There was a man that was paralyzed. And he, imagine being paralyzed, right? And you can't move your legs. You can move your upper body. Imagine the the pain, imagine the frustration and the anger, imagine the day-to-day -day things, just from going to the restroom to getting something to eat. He can't work. Imagine that. But he had four friends that would come and get him and take him because his four friends believed that he could get a healing. It was their faith. Even though the man that was paralyzed had little faith. Because day in and day out he woke up every day doing the same thing. Seeing the same people in like a robotic. You know, when you, when you start getting to that point where you just do things and you're just emotionless because you're doing it every day, the same old thing every day, and you just, you start to lose your smile, you start to lose hope, and you just let bitterness and anger take over your heart and sadness. But his friends did not give up on him. His friends did not give up on his miracle. His friends had faith that he was going to get healed. And one day, Jesus came into town and was doing a miracle healing and was also teaching his, his word. And imagine, this guy's paralyzed. He's heavy. The Bible doesn't say how big he was, but even if he was 160 pounds, 150 pounds, that's still heavy to have to carry. And it doesn't say in the Bible how far they had to carry him. But it does say that they carried him to the house and that the house was packed. It was so packed. There was people arm to arm, smush smushed all the way outside the door. But their faith, the four guys' faith, lifted their friend up over the crowd, above the roof, and dug and removed tiles from the roof to lower him down just so that he could see Jesus. That man, the paralyzed man, the one that was in the robotic stage every day, not sure if he was ever going to walk again. Watching people and watching the dust and dirt fly over him as he sat outside, probably begging for money and change. And watching people overlook him as they went by. He had a little bit left of faith inside of his heart. And as his friends lowered him down, Jesus was like your great faith meaning his friends and he looked at his uh, the paralyzed guy and says your sins have been forgiven and get up and walk grab your mat 
and go home. Imagine this man being lowered, paralyzed, not knowing if he was going to fall off the mat, being lowered down, not knowing if he was even going to get healed or not, not knowing if anyone's going to listen to him. But Jesus looks at him and says, Your sins are forgiven. Imagine Jesus just telling you your sins are forgiven. Everything that you've done wrong in your life. Everything that you did wrong to somebody else. But your sins are forgiven. And then he says, because you are paralyzed right now. You are defeated from the divorce. You are defeated from the addiction. You are defeated from the illness. You are paralyzed. You're unable to even think and do anything but the normal routine that you're stuck in every day. But Jesus says, you are forgiven. Get up. Get up and walk home. I'm here to tell you that even if you have lost everything, that little bit of faith is still enough to bring you a breakthrough. It's still enough to bring you a miracle in your life. It's still enough to change things around for the good. I'm here to tell you to share your burden. Share your addiction. Speak it to somebody. Say, cry out for help. Tell somebody about your divorce. Tell somebody about your marriage. Tell somebody about you lost your job. Because when you share your burden, you share it with people that have faith. Don't share it with people, if you're going through a divorce, don't share it with uh, somebody else that's going through a divorce. Share it with somebody that's not going through the same thing at that time because you want to share it with somebody that has faith that's going to pull you out that's going to pray for you even when you can't even pray for yourself they're going to pray for you they're going to stand in agreement with you and they're going to pray for you they are going to lift you up above the roof they are going to lower you down and put you in front of Jesus so that Jesus can look at you and say your sins are forgiven get up and walk away with your head high. Walk away knowing that you're going to have a great job. Walk away knowing that your marriage is going to be reconciled. Walk away knowing that you are no longer going to be a drug addict. That you were healed in Jesus' name. Walk away knowing that that illness, that disease that's been that's been tackling your body and crippling your bones and your mind and making you sick to your stomach and keeping you from just going outside and, and enjoying the beautiful day. Let people share your burden that can pray for you. So you can get that faith that's been buried deep underneath the bitterness and the anger and the frustration pulled out so that you can believe and know that your breakthrough is there that your miracle is there put it in your mind put it in your heart and keep pushing forward because God is alive God is real God is going to push you through the breakthrough push you through the pain uplift you when you are on your knees crying but share your burden. Right now, I want to share your burden. I want to tell you that your addiction is not going to take you out. That your addiction is not going to break you down. You are going to make it through. We can get you counseling. We can get you into a rehab. But you have to have the faith and know it. And not just believe it, but know that you are worthy and that you are victorious and that you are a winner. I share your burden for divorce. Because 
maybe it's your pride maybe it's his pride maybe it's it's the argument that neither one of y'all want to listen because you've 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 put so much anger and and frustration and and bitterness in your heart and you've built that wall but you're neither one of y'all want to tear that wall down but when you share your burden and you get surrounded by people that can pray for your marriage for people that can pray for you and your husband and keep you all in faith in God because the enemy wants to destroy everything. He's coming to kill, steal, and destroy everything. And sometimes he comes after the very people that he knows is so blessed. Because he's like, oh, they got everything. They are so anointed by God. I'm going to come at every angle that they can think of. I'm going to come after their marriage. I'm going to come after their job. I'm going to come after their kids. I'm going to come after their vehicles. I'm going to come after their health. But I'm here to tell you, no matter what, I share your burden. And I want to thank everyone that has shared my burden. Because there was a time at the beginning of this when they told me my cancer came back, that you could have told me anything. And I, and it's, it's, I go to church all the time. I'm in ministry all the time. But let me tell you, when someone tells you, the doctors tell you the cancer came back, I was having PTSD. I'm not going to lie to you. I was having post-traumatic stress disorder from the previous time I had cancer and the chemo and everything that I went through, all those emotions and feelings came over me. And then when they looked at me and told me that I had to get radiation, one part of me was saying, no, don't do it. Don't do it. It's going to kill you. You know why? That was the devil. The devil saying, no, don't do the radiation. Because he wants the cancer to take all over my body. He's trying to kill me. Because I'm in God. And God is in me. And I'm a threat. So right now, if anyone is on the receiving end of this video. If I can even touch one person today. I want to tell you. Share your burden. And don't lose your faith. Don't lose your hope. I know that you might have got knocked down by that illness. I know that this relationship that you're in is pulling you left and right. And, and you're just at, a, at the lowest low. I know that losing that job and you got kids to feed and your cars broke down. You don't know what to do. I know. I've been there. Share your burden because you can't do it alone. Just like the paralyzed man could not get his miracle alone. He had to share his burden. And by the faith of his friends, by the strength and faith of his friends, it helped pull him up, pull him out, and set him at the feet of Jesus. If you need to be in agreement, if there's something going wrong with you in your life, share your burden. Share your burden with somebody that you can trust. And even if it's somebody you don't know, go to a church, go to your counselor, go to someone that you know that has faith. It could be even a co-worker. But God is going to open doors for those that share each other's burdens. Because right now I'm seeing it. I'm seeing the blessings that God is doing for me in my life, my husband, kids' life. And those that are surrounding me every day, 
the blessings that are being poured out on them is amazing. And I know it's not just me, but I know it's because they are sharing my burden. And I know that God has so much faith and loves the fact that if you have those fruits and that you share them, God is going to multiply great blessings in your life. Have a great day, everybody. And I hope this touches at least one person. Stay blessed.